Every one of us has crossroad moments when you just wish you could know what God has to say. And just have God speak really clear and know exactly what you ought to do, what would be the very best choice every single time. I tried to think of my crossroad moments. I'm at this end. Some of you are on the other end. I stand outside of Hilda's apartment 30 years ago. She plays special music in my father's church. My father calls me up and says, Dan, I got a girl for you. She's actually a member of your church. Let's go make a pastoral visit. <laughs> and he called her up and he says, can we come over? And we're standing in the parking lot. And I just said, this is stupid. This is really stupid. Why am I doing this? But we're already there. She's expecting us. My father makes me go up. And we've been married 29 years. <laughs> Changed my life. Crossroad moments. How do you know? You just wish you could know for sure. God speaks and God talks to you and God will reveal his will to you if you'll just listen. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. And Isaiah 58, 11 says, the Lord will guide you always. Psalm 25, 12, God will show you the path to choose. We could go on a long time. Many verses about God's wisdom and his guidance. God knows best. So now, just in case you're facing some of these crossroad moments, how can you know God's will? So I've got six S's for you, as quick as we can go. Number one is Scripture. The great majority of decisions, if you're honest with Scripture and if you know the Bible, it'll settle the decision all by itself. And I think there's many of us that could stand up here and just tell you stories. The more you know the Bible, the closer you follow the Bible, the better your life will be over time. The Bible is very clear. David says in Psalm 119, Thy word, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God's word is the best. But number two, spirit. There are just times when the Bible isn't so clear. What is your major going to be? Who should you marry? There may be some values that are clear, but the specifics are not clear. And the Bible says you can come to God in the Holy Spirit and he will speak to you. He does not shout in what we call the still, small voice. Whispers, promptings of the Spirit. I just sat and listened, looked at my life, different times, I could go a long time, crossroad moments when I just knew God had whispered to me. It's a big deal to me. I live in this all the time. I'll just tell you one. I was pastoring in Oregon, and I was driving down to PUC where my parents were. Six hours, I'd already preached or worked all day. I'm driving. It's now midnight. I'm about Lake Shasta. And I'm going to just camp somewhere and find a spot by the side of the road in a campground. But I can't seem to find the campground around Lake Shasta that I was looking for. And it's midnight, and I'm tired, and I'm rocketing down these little two-lane roads when all of a sudden there were no lines. I said, where'd the lines go? And I'm going up around a little, and I started going, I, I think I better slow down. And as I slowed down and came over the rise and came over the little hill, I saw a reflection, and it was the moonlight in Lake Shasta. I was on the boat ramp. Do you get it? I was 30 feet from driving into Lake Shasta at 50 miles an hour. Oh, thank you, God, for a little whisper that said, slow down, slow down. Dwight Nelson and I, Pastor at Andrews now, driving along a freeway from Portland to Walla Walla. I saw this car coming on the car. I said, I think it's on our side of the road. And I moved over, and boom, this car goes by me. But two young pastors would have been history 35 years ago. Impressions. And the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 13, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons and daughters of God. One new Christian told the person that brought him to Christ, he said, I can feel a spook inside of me. What is this spook? And the guy said, I, said, I think that's the Holy Spirit. You can just, something is talking to you. Someone is whispering to you. You don't hear audible voices. Someone is talking to you. That's the Holy Spirit. Bill Hybels said, he has three B's. Believe, be still, be aware. 
First, you have to believe that God loves you, that he knows what is best, and that he's trying to talk to you, and that God is still talking to you today. You have to believe that if you're going to listen to God's voice. But number two, you have to say, be still and know that I am God. And if you're not hearing the voice of God, maybe there's just too much noise in your life. That you're not comfortable with silence, turn everything off and just be still to give God's voice a chance. Because he will not shout. He whispers. And then you have to just be aware and look around at your life as God begins to whisper to you and to hear God's whisper until you just know that God has spoken to you. Number three, spiritual people. The Bible says in Proverbs 11, with good counselors there is safety. In Proverbs, a fool thinks he needs no advice. A wise person listens to others. Once in a while, there just have to be a few people in your life that you say, you know, would you just check me out? I kind of think maybe God is saying this to me, but I'm not sure. Maybe I got some blind spot that I'm not seeing. Would you just, would you just kind of talk me through this? And make sure that I'm not thinking crazy about this. You find some people who know God. Spiritual mentors, spiritual directors, whatever you want to call them. I've had a number of them in my life. And even now, after 40 years in the ministry, I have people that I call and say, what do you think? One of them lives across the street from me in Riverside. I have called him. He was the president of La Sierra University. I called him from all over the world. What do you think? Mentors, spiritual directors. Check me out. Make sure that I am hearing God. You do not give over your whole life to them. I'll do whatever you say. You don't come to Pastor Tony. Say, Pastor Tony, I, don't want to, I can't deal with it. You tell me what I'm doing, and I'll do it. You do not give over your life to someone else and your spiritual guru, but you take them seriously. You listen, and maybe you, they, or a group of people gather around you, and they say, this is what we see. This is what we hear. Spiritual people in your life. Number four, a sequence. You look back at your life and you see the events that God has led in your life. And that trajectory kind of begins to point of where you ought to go. I was eight months in a conference office between churches. And anybody who knew me at the end of that just said, that is not Pastor Dan. He was just not made to be in an office, an odd hole, infrastructure. Maybe I could have done it better. I just didn't fit that. Anybody who knew me before knows. Someone asked me at lunch this week, Pastor Dan, what are you going to do when you retire? I said, anybody who knows me knows what I'm going to do. They know what I like to do. They know what I'm wired to be. They know what lights me up. They know what makes me get excited. They know what I'm best at. And if you know where God has led you, you can predict where the future is. I was talking to Hilda. She took nursing. And she said there was a day when all the nursing students had to come together in a room and practice giving each other shots. Are you kidding me? You gave shots to each other from this student who never gave a shot before in their life, and they give it to you? I would have been in another major that night. <laughs> I'm not that. I'm thankful for the nurses who are that. But I am not that. And you can look at your trajectory of the sequence of events in your life, and you can begin to kind of, tra that's probably who I am. That is what God has anointed me to be. Number five. Signs. Everybody wants signs. Fleeces. Gideon fleeces. Just, you don't have to think about it anymore. Just, you have a sign. Whoever walks through the door in five minutes, that's who it. I had one lady, uh, she, she said, I will marry whoever sells more religious books this summer. One guy won, ended up being my father-in-law. I said, that's how you decide these things? One guy trying to decide whether you ought to fly or drive. Woke up in the morning, the digital clock radio said 747. Okay, I'll fly. <laughs> if my house sells, then we're supposed to move. Have you heard that one? That's one little part of it, but that is not a sign. God does not want you to just go by signs. Kierkegaard, famous philosopher, said, living by signs is trying to learn math by reading the answers in the back of the book. You don't learn math. God does not want you weak and just, okay, and do magic signs for you all the time. He wants you to wrestle and think and learn to hear the still small voice. And so you can know the word of God. There's an old joke. This has been around a long time. One man, he just said, I'm going to close my eyes and go through the Bible and just 
That's going to have to be God's will for my life. So he did it, pointed, and it said, Matthew 27, 5, Judas went and hanged himself. I said, no, that can't be right. So let's do it again. Maybe we'll get two out of three. Went to the next one, Luke 10, 37, go and do likewise. <laughs> and then John 13, 27, what you do, do quickly. <laughs> ah, just, you get the point. And now the last question. I have pastored people for a long time with this. What happens when you have gone through the whole process and you've looked at Scripture and you've begged God and you've been stilled and you've tried to listen to God and you've listened to wise people in your life and you've looked at your trajectory and all the signs and it's just too close to call and you just don't know what God is trying to say to you. And we would just say, what do you want to do? God speaks to you through your own desires. If you've given them to God, God will speak through that. He does not want to frustrate you and put, in a, put you in a place where you just hate it. He isn't that kind of God. He wants you to be somewhere where you are going to flourish. And so he says in Psalm 37, 4, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he will grant you the desires of your heart. And just go with your desires and move ahead. Well, it's time to, time to tie this together. And this is what I think Pastor Tony means when he talks about this elephant in the room. Where many of us, we know about God, but we don't really know God. And here is the dream that there is a place to get to in your spiritual life where you just know God so well. You can do whatever you want, whatever you feel like doing without any laws or any restrictions and total freedom and know that you are getting it right every time because you just know God and the voice of God. Tony told me to uh, go back and read again uh, Richard Foster. I think I probably read it before you were born, but forgot about it. Thank you for reminding me. Great chapter on guidance. Great chapter. Boy, just good to read it again. Fantastic. But if I could just say this to you, Richard Foster was not only trying to help you know how to hear the voice of God by yourself. He is trying to say it is possible to know the will of God as a community, where you're a part of a group that just all of you are beginning to hear God together, and there begins to be this dance or this ensemble. And Richard Foster says, someday at the end of the world, there is going to be a group of people who are all hearing the voice of God together at the same time. And there is this dance and this choreography in the spirit where we are just together. That's what we're trying to do right here, right now. Amen? God bless you all.